Well, hi, guys. It's that time. That's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. The last time that I was on teaching, I told you that I wanted to talk to you next about the six trials that Jesus had. And today I want to talk about that. So here we are. We're in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane. And the Garden of Gethsemane is in the middle of an olive grove. It's called the Mount of Olives. It's up on a hillside, and there's all these beautiful olive trees. And in a section up on top of the mound, there's a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. I have been there two times, and it's absolutely beautiful. So anyway, Judas comes with the soldiers, and he kisses Jesus on the cheek so the soldiers know that they're arresting the right person, okay? They, they bind him. I mean, Jesus gave up on his own. They didn't have to chain him and bind him the way they did because he gave up and said, I'll go with you. Now, what they normally would do is to take a prisoner and put him in a holding place until the next day. When the sun came up in the, in the daytime, okay, while it's daylight out, they would send out what they called criers. A crier was a proclaimer, and the proclaimer would go about the city saying, Jesus of Nazareth has been arrested, and he's been charged with this. If you know anything about his innocence, please come and prove this man is innocent. And that's how they would do court. They didn't do that with Jesus. That night, under the shadow of darkness, they arrest Jesus, which, by the way, there was a full moon that night. Very interesting. Uh, that's in the movie, The Passion of Christ. But anyway, and that's a true, that's true. It was a full moon that night. So they go and take Jesus, first of all, to a man's house. Uh, his name is Annas, A-N-N-A-S. Now, Annas was at one time the high priest, but he was retired. After they leave Annas' house, they take Jesus to Caiaphas' house. Now, Caiaphas is the seated high priest at the time. So now I have to, he's over the Sanhedrin. So let me explain to you what the Sanhedrin and a high priest was in that day. The word Sanhedrin means literally sitting together, meaning an assembly or a council. There were 71 people in the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. Ananias, I'm sorry, Annas was at one time the high priest, but he was not in office at the time. His son-in-law, Caiaphas, was the high priest. So they carried him to Annas' and then he carried him to uh, Caiaphas. But watch this. Still in the dark of the night, they go out and gather up some Sanhedrin, not all of them, but some of them, and select ones, by the way, to try to make Jesus guilty. And instead of trying to find people who could prove Jesus innocent in the daytime, they went out at night to find people who would wrongly accuse Jesus and lie on him so they would have some legal right to prosecute Jesus. Now, I want to keep going here because those are the first three trials, Annas, Caiaphas, and then the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is where they hit him and spit on him, and they would slap him and say, prophesy who hit you. Okay. The next three things would be in front of Pilate. Now, his name is actually Pilate, P-I-L-A-T-E, but here in the United States, especially in the southern area, we call him Pilate. But it's not Pilate, it's Pilate. And then Pilate finds out that Jesus is from Galilee. So he finds a way out from being involved in this. He sends him to Herod, who is the governor over uh, Galilee. Let me explain this really quick. Herod, that is seated as the governor of Galilee, is called Antipas. Now, Herod Antipas was the son of Herod the Great. Herod the Great is the one that killed all the babies that were two years old and younger when Jesus was born. Joseph and Mary run and hide in Egypt because Jesus is being hunted down even as a, a baby. And they stay in Egypt until after Herod the Great dies, but they still won't go back to Jerusalem in that area because one of Herod the Great's sons would have still hunted Jesus to kill him. So they go in refuge to Galilee, 
where Herod Antipas is. This same king, Herod Antipas, that would have protected Jesus as a boy to keep the Jerusalem rulers from getting him, is the same man that Jesus would stand in front of this very night. Now, Herod did not find Jesus guilty. He got mad at him because he wouldn't play games with him. He wanted Jesus to do miracles and perform and entertain him, and Jesus wouldn't do that. So Herod says he's not guilty of anything. Send him back to Pilate. And then Pilate ends up doing what the high priest and the Sanhedrin want him to do. Now, now I want to go into telling you this. I want to tell you about the six people that found Jesus and stated out loud that Jesus was innocent. This is very interesting. So we had six trials of six people that would not stand up and say he's innocent. But now we have six people that speak out loud that Jesus is innocent. Here we go. Judas himself returns the money and says, I have betrayed innocent blood. And the high priest would not put the blood money back into the treasury. And what they did with it is they bought the field of uh, the potter's field. The potter's field was uh, an area that they had dug up all of the good clay dirt so they could make pottery out of it. And it was just a trash field that had been pilfered and it was worthless actually. And they would use it as a body dumping ground. The next person that would say Jesus is innocent was Pilate's wife. Pilate's wife told Pilate, leave him alone. He is an innocent man. Have no part in this. The next person that would say that Jesus is innocent is Pilate himself. Actually, Pilate said that Jesus was innocent two different times. And then we have Herod, the governor of Galilee, Herod Antipas that sends him back. He says Jesus is innocent. One of the criminals on the cross next to Jesus said Jesus was innocent. And here's the last one that's recorded saying out loud Jesus was innocent. It was the centurion Roman soldier when Jesus died. He said, surely this was an innocent man. This was the Son of God. So guys, that's my teaching today. And God bless you. And I'll see you right here again on Facebook. Bye-bye.